Cowboys leading the number two team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, 28 to 12. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. Well, that Oklahoma State defense, Charles, is flying all over the football field. Their offense is doing everything they're supposed to do, especially not turning it over. Taking care of the football, no turnovers. They're running the ball well. Mike Hamilton has 114 yards, and Al Pena has only thrown eight passes. A direct correlation, and they're playing awfully well. Well, so far, Oklahoma State has more rushing yards than any team has had against Texas this year. Of course, Texas will get the ball first to begin the second half, and it is out of the end zone. Just a moment ago, our Craig Sager had a chance to talk to Mac Brown of Texas. Well, Coach, we've seen the script before, but last year the game was at your place. You had Cedric Benson's shoulders to ride. What was your message at halftime? Well, the message was we're in better shape than we were last year. Shoot, we're only 16 down. Every time we've played Oklahoma State, give them credit. We've been down at halftime. They're playing their guts out. Uh, they're a young football team that played with a lot of confidence. They forced two turnovers. They outrushed us. We had one call back for a holding penalty. We had two kicks blocked. We've got to play better the second half and start making some plays. First five minutes is critical again. Vince Young is called the comeback kid seven times. He's led your team to victory after trailing, being tied at half. What'd you tell him? Told him that he's been here before and he's never lost. Don't plan on him losing tonight. Okay, no panic here. Back to you, Ryan. I think you hit it on the head, Greg. There is no panic, and I think the players will sense that, obviously, with the head coach. And just what he said, we've been here before. Yeah. We talked about it in the first half against this very team, and that's what's led them to have as much confidence as they have in their ability to come back from deficits. Second down and 11 now for the Longhorns. Max said first five minutes important. Oklahoma State shows the blitz, throws it out in the flat, and Vince Young's pass is going to fall incomplete. Let's check out our Chase halftime statistics. And the rushing yards, 151 for Oklahoma State, more than anybody's rushed against Texas this year. And, and what's amazing to me, so Oklahoma State's only converted one of six on third yeah. down because you talk about having to possess the football, keep Texas's offense off the field. They're running the ball well, and they've overcome some deficits <laughs> in yeah. some of the spots that they need to have, you know, some positives. Third down and 11. Oklahoma State active on defense. Young gets away. Great punt fake. Gets the first down and then some. Say goodbye to Vince Young. Touchdown, Texas. Eighty-yard run for Vince Young, the longest of this year. The pump fake made the play for Vince Young because he faked Donovan Woods, the free safety, off of his feet. See the pump fake there? See Woods, number eight, jumps up in the air to try and bat down a pass. Then he gets a block on the corner on Chase Holland, number 14, from one of his wide receivers. And Secretariat <laughs> I'm telling you. goes to the post. And the extra point is good. Now, Mac Brown said Vince Young has been there before. Last year, these two teams, Texas scored on their final seven drives while amassing 600 yards. Is it going to be the same this year? We'll find out. Young has already rushed for 213 yards. Only the second time he's cracked the century mark rushing this year. Now can Oklahoma State answer the short kick at the 10-yard line? Grant Jones, he looks for some space and gets a little bit of it as he gets over the 22-yard line before Michael Huff brings him down. There's a big game going out in the Pac-10. All right, we still have a lot of time left in this football game. Yes, we see that Stanford team next week against USC in Los Angeles. He's done with career high rushing. Now Pena's pass is short out. Now you talked at halftime. He only had to throw the ball eight times. You don't want to get in something that you don't want to do and feel comfortable doing. No, you don't want to get to a throw, throw, throw. And I know Mike Gundy and Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator, don't want that to happen with Al Pena. But you also need to be able to effectively throw some short passes. Otherwise, Texas loads up on you in the run game. Right now, this is a dangerous time for Oklahoma oh, yeah. State. They cannot allow the momentum to totally shift to the Longhorns. And he's being chased by a bunch of white jerseys, throws across his body, incomplete, and it was not a good pass again. 
two straight incompletions. College football going on there for Walt Harris. We'll find out. Look the draw here. And 30 10. Here comes the pressure. This one slowing up for grabs, and it is going to be incomplete. But he may have gotten a free play out of it. That's why he threw it up there for Dewan Woods in that yeah. fashion. Ross was on the coverage of Woods. You know, I, I think he thinks it's a free play. Let's go to my guy and see if he can make it a bigger one. Offside defense, five yards, third down. You know, you called it in the first half, Charles, about snapping the ball and getting that free play. You know, and they, they got it on that one, and Aaron Ross had excellent coverage. But since he knew that he had the penalty, I'm going to throw the jump ball and see if Juwan Wood can yeah. make a, a good, you know, since I have the play in my pocket, see if he can make a bigger one. I called draw last time, see if they go here. That's third down and five. That's the showing blitz again. Here they come. Look out. Peña just throws it away. Incomplete pass. And Peña took a, a shot and went down, and he gets up a little gimpy. Yeah, I really think Oklahoma State has got to be very careful on offense now because Gene Chizik has his defense aroused. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are coming out. They're hitting everything that moves, and they're making you show quickly what you're going to do on offense. You know, Al Pena wanted to have another count or two before he threw the ball inside on the screen. He had no opportunity. You know, on that play, Rashad Bobineau forced the play so quickly. Texas is going to take over now. The last time they punted, and that's going to be a free one again. That'll be a first down for Oklahoma State. I was going to say Texas almost blocked the last punt, but this is going to be an offside penalty against the Longhorns. And that's just a bad penalty for Texas. Mm -hmm. I think that's Roy Miller, number 75, jumping off sides. He's not the guy who's going to really block the punt anyway. You know, trying to get the great jump. That's nice, but that's going to cost the team. Offside, 75 defense. Five yards, first down. Right in the middle of the screen. See him jumping? Yeah, that's a play. I mean, Texas has things going their way. Now they give an, an extra possession to Oklahoma State and better field position for them to run their offense. Eight penalties now for the uh, Texas Longhorns in this football game. And now what Oklahoma State needs is a good drive. Mm -hmm. You know, the last few plays have not been very good for them. On first down, they go back to the running game, right up the middle, and they pick up about four and a half on it. Hamilton's done a nice job in that first half. Aaron Harris coming up to make his third stop of the night. Hamilton is very intriguing. They call him the the best of the bunch, recruited by both the Florida and Florida State, but said he wanted to come to Oklahoma State. But I've, what I've liked about him is his patience as a runner. Mm -hmm. Craig Sager talked to Barry Sanders, and we saw Thurman Thomas earlier, the two, two of the greater runners, better runners here at Oklahoma State. He's showing some of those attributes of their patience running the ball. Well, Pena gets the first down as he gets inside or over the 40 up to about the 43-yard line. He's shown us a little bit of running ability. He's got the running touchdown tonight. Second time tonight that he's had to handle a snap. Remember yeah. in the first half, he and Hamilton turned it into a big gain on a run. This time he turns it into a first down on the zone read inside. Fakes it and takes it outside to pick up, to pick up the first down. the top to the outside looking for a block they get it and that's another big chunk of about 11 yards for this Oklahoma State offense and Mike Hamilton watch the blocking again in the first half we talked about how they secured the end and that play they did it again David Washington number 63 the center getting out in front 75 Corey Hilliard and Mike Hamilton rambling upfield. 29 yards on the night for Hamilton. First and 10 for the Cowboys in Longhorn territory. They rush five. Pena scrambling for his life. Tries to throw this one away and he does. And he goes down again. The pressure was put on from the defensive end but once again we're seeing that quickness of Texas's defense. Yeah, Brian O'Rakpo number 98 
showing his speed from the defensive end, running down Al Pena from the backside. But what Pena did that was so that was so good, and coaches are going to like, is he got rid of the ball in a spot where it could not be picked off. He didn't try and make a terrific play when there wasn't one there. That's second and ten. Pena, the hand off the goal. He is tripped up and goes nowhere. That'll bring up a third down in about ten, maybe a little bit more. That time the speed was there, and he just couldn't find that corner. Unable to set the corner. Look at Hilliard, 75. He gets the block there, but look at how Huff, number seven, the yeah. free safety, shows so quickly. As a free safety, you're called an alley player. From the middle of the field, you go into the alleys on either side on run plays, inside out. And Michael Huff did exactly that and made a nice play. And it's third down and long. We'll call it 11. Corners are playing up tight on the receivers. They swing it out to the far side. And the near side. Gold. And he takes a wallop as he gets down to about the 42-yard line. Only picked up about three on the play. Cedric Griffin lowered the boom on him. That was a play where Texas's speed made up. Mm -hmm. A good, you know, it, 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 what I should say is it suffocated what looked like a good play for Oklahoma State. It appeared to be set up to the outside. But their speed ran the play down from inside out. <laughs> That's right. Bodge has only had two punts. You can see what he's averaged. 43 on the long, one inside the 20. Standing back at his 45-yard line. Aaron Ross back on the 10 for Texas. You're in Texas. You're in punt safe now. You don't want him to fake anything on you. And the rush comes up the middle, and he booms it. That'll go over the head of Ross. And Oklahoma yeah. State does a great job covering it. The second punt inside the 20. As Ricky Price got down there and stopped the ball from going into the end zone, number six. 38 yards on the kick, Charles, but this is textbook. Great job of Ricky Price locating the football, not the punt returner, and kills it dead inside the five-yard. Fans, now it's time for the And I didn't laugh. How about that? I, breaking I, had street. To, I had to stop. I uh. caught myself. <laughs> Now the Longhorns take over. The last time that Oklahoma State had a punt like this, the Longhorns were forced to punt. They begin first and ten. Ball's on the four-yard line. Vince Young already tonight. Career high rushing, career long run. But they still trail 28-19. Gotta be careful play action if you're the DBs. There it is. And he looks and he throws and he completes up over the 30-yard line to the 33-yard line. To Neil Tweedy, the big tight end out of Lucas, Texas. That's his first catch of the year. It's what they call a solo set. One back in the backfield, two tight ends, two wide receivers, a balanced set. So you really have no strength to either side. Vince Young on play action, excellent touch because he throws it over the linebackers and before the secondary. And Neil Tweedy coming up with his first catch of the year. Am I correct in that? That's all right. 28 yards. And the Longhorns get out of the hole, and the pass is incomplete right off the hands of Lima Swede. Out of Washington, Texas, Brenham High School. It's one of those ones, I think, where Bobby Kennedy, as wide receivers coach, will tell him in film, hands, isolate the football instead of letting it get to your body. If it gets to the body and to the pads, sometimes it's tougher to cradle at a short distance because Vince Young has a little zip on it. Second down and ten. Pitt into the near side. Oklahoma State brings four. Young tucks it and runs. He is going to be caught from behind, not before he picks up a couple of yards. Jerry Don Bray out of Chickasha, Oklahoma, on the stop. That was dangerous because he had the ball in his right hand. It looked like it was going to be stripped. And he was still looking for a pass option. He didn't really totally commit to flushing from the pocket and going. And so the ball was out a little. See how he's trying to keep it? Ball's out. Very fortunate that Jerry Don Bray is not able to yank it and strip yeah. it as Victor DeGreat did earlier in this game. They need three for the first down. Young, plenty of time. Jumps it off, almost hits the official. And it looked like Billy Pittman just ran into the official. He did. Ran right into the umpire on a shallow crossing route. That's Wes White, the umpire. 
And Vince Young thinks he has it. You see Jamar Ransom, number 44, trying to read it. And he's on the play. Would have been good coverage, but even better coverage by Wes White, the umpire. Remember, he's part of the field. It's just the way it goes. Who said West was only good on offense? He played some pretty good D there. Oklahoma State fans think he is their new 12th man. <laughs> uh, fourth down and three. Texas is going to kick it away. McLemore signals the fair catch at the 25-yard line. 36 yards out of the kick. Well, let's check in on UCLA. Joe Cowan has come up with some major receptions this year for the Bruins. Big in the fourth quarter. Yeah. He and Marcus Everett, his cohort at wide receiver. Craig Sager, what do you have for us, partner? Well, probably the most important series of the night for the Oklahoma State offense. On the sideline, Mike Gundy talking with Al Pena. They need Mike Hamilton to get some yards to take some pressure off of Pena. Now, remember, he has eight interceptions in the last two weeks. They're going to try to avoid crossing patterns. He has a tendency to underthrow the receiver. Good insight, Craig. Pena, dangerous pass, complete up at the 28-yard line to Ricky Price, the freshman out of Houston, Texas. His first catch of the night, 11th of the year. Just a little, little out pattern. They try and cross. This is what defensive backs like to call three yards and a headache. <laughs> Aaron Ross in short coverage. Sees it all develop in front of him. No problem. You'll complete it, but you'll remember me. Pick up four on the play. They go back to the sweep. Hamilton looking for the corner, gets to the 30, hesitates, able to get up to the 32-yard line. That'll set up a third down at about three. Here's Craig Sager again. Well, Pena told Gundy, obviously, he's more comfortable with the outside patterns that we saw in that last pass attempt. Remember, he was the third-string quarterback. He did not get a lot of reps this summer. He has not been in sync with receivers. We saw it in the film of the interceptions. We saw it at practice also this week. The whole goal is to stay level-headed and do not lose the game. You know, Craig, you bring up a great point, and here's a kid that told Coach uh, Gundy, he said, listen, I know I'm third string, but I'm going to practice like I'm going to play. That's a coach's son talking. The take to Hamilton. Pena has a man, got the first down up to the 39-yard line of Kawan Woods. His third reception, his first that wasn't a touchdown. And they did it on a simple crossing route. But what it was was the counter to the first one that was completed because everybody could see Woods just comes in here. And because he came in there, remember the first pattern that was completed that Aaron Ross made the tackle? They, they put guys inside mm -hmm. and then ran one receiver out. This time they showed the same motion and just hooked Juan Woods inside for the first down. He's got great hands and great speed and he got the first down. Step drop to quick out caught at the 45-yard line. It's Woods again. 18 straight games. He's had at least one reception. Number four on OSU's career reception yards mark. Remember Lima Swede dropping the ball for mm -hmm. Texas because he got into his pads? Look at the difference here. See how he caught the ball and isolated it with his hands before he brings it into his body? Look at this. That's how you're taught. Look at that. And then he brings it into his body. Great catch by DeJuan Woods. Now Oklahoma State goes from the I formation to give it to the fullback. Sean Willis. Second down, they only needed four. He may have gotten one, maybe two. Mike Gundy seems like they've got a pretty good rhythm going offensively right now. Short passes, nothing real dangerous. We did last year's game. Momentum changed so quickly. Mm -hmm. It was like a tidal wave that rushed back over Oklahoma State. I'm not sensing that tonight. I'm sensing a team here that's going to hang in there a lot better than last year's team did. They need to. You saw their success rate on third down. Texas bunches the line. Hamilton gets into the secondary, gets over the 50 down to the 45-yard line. Arakpo on the stop. But tonight it's a return to last year. Mm -hmm. The offensive line has to be enjoying what they're doing. 187 yards rushing as a team. Payton's pass dangerous, almost picked off at the 40, incomplete. Terrific coverage by Aaron Ross and Craig Sager just mentioned. Got to be careful with the football. This was not a crossing route, just a little hitch. Aaron Ross broke up, broke up on the play. 
and knocked it free. Got to be careful with those because if it's a pick, yeah. it's going the other way for six. And he threw it to the inside and looked like maybe Woods had better position for an outside catch. On second and ten, and everybody's jumping. They're going to push it back a little bit. Dead ball, false start, 61 orange. Five yards. Well, Koenig First now down. with three penalties against him today. Oh, Thurman Thomas doesn't like it. He's into this. A loyal alum. So much for Grizzly veteran. I've seen it all, huh? <laughs> and you know darn well. And Thurman, who is a candidate for the NFL Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in his first year of candidacy, I expect him to be voted in. You know, he'd like to be out there doing it right now. Oh, yeah. Those players never want to give it up. Second down and 15 from the 50. They'll go from the shotgun. Pena looking at a four-man rush, running away from it. Penalty flag is thrown. He throws complete. It'll probably come back inside the 20, down to the 18, Ricky Price. But when you have the quarterback scrambling around and a penalty flag is thrown, chances are it's coming back. 31 on the reception. Holding 78 offense. 10 yards, first down. Ellen Davis, the culprit. And that wiped out a beautiful play by Al Pena. Scrambling around, showing poise. See if we can find it. Kellen Davis is right in the middle. He's grabbing Larry Dibble's number 92. And then drops it in delicately yeah. for Ricky Price. Right here, this is this is Davis 78. He's going to be working on Larry Dibble's 92. See how he's got the arm right there? See it right there? That's where he's got it. The official's on the spot. Well, they had good field position. They were at the Texas 45-yard line. Now they're back to their own 40-yard line. It's second and 25. Texas thinks they saw something. They're saying that left side of the line moved, and Oklahoma State's still not moving. They're just standing there. Dead ball, false start, 87 offense, five yards, first down. Now Pettigrew is the one who jerked. Right in here. Up there it is. Yep, there's the lift. On the spot was Tim Crowder, number eight. Even got a little extra shove in there, a free shove I'll tell you, Tim Crowder. I like Texas' reaction, though. They're, they're quick. They see that. They're going to go after it. So you push back a little bit more. Now it's second down and 30. And remember, you don't have to get it all back in one chunk right now. The key now is not to make a mistake at this end of the field. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Hamilton gets up to the 40, gets five of them back. It'll be third down and 25. But you have to look at the fact that if Oklahoma State is not successful, Texas is going to get some pretty good field position. And you're going to give some momentum to this Texas defense. The good thing Oklahoma State is doing, though, is they're continuing to run time off the clock. Mm -hmm. they're, they have not turned the ball over deep in their territory and allowed Texas to build on the momentum of the first touchdown of the second half. So this is, in this way, you know, in those ways, it's different than what we saw from last year's Oklahoma State team mm -hmm. in this game. Third and 25, they're going to play it safe. Hamilton gets close to midfield, shoved out of bounds right at the 49 and a half yard line by Aaron Ross. That'll bring the punt team on. At least they gave a little bit of, uh, got some little room there to kick it away now. And they gained actually yeah. decent field position because they're punting from near midfield. And yeah. earlier today, they've, you know, they've knocked a couple down deep in, in, in Texas's territory, trying to make them go the long way. Now Texas has gotten awfully close to blocking a punt tonight a couple of times. Ross back in his 15. I'm Texas. I just want the football here. I'm not worried about blocking anything. And they blocked it. And it's going to roll down inside the 30-yard line. Robert Killebrew got a hand on it. Right up the middle again. They didn't even have a true block on. That's what's amazing about this. That's now, a bull rush. That's, is that Casey Stutter, number 64, their offensive lineman? Is that him going over the top with Killebrew? It is. <laughs> <laughs> he got some hops.
games, the offense has scored at least 42 points, and the defense has held their opponent. And they did it again. Second week in a row, they blocked a punt. This time it came on Robert Killebrew out of Spring, Texas, Clyde High School. Got a little help, though, from Casey Stutter. And yeah, now Casey Stutter turns around and wants to mask someone on offense as a starting offensive guard, number 64 in white. First and 10. Ball on the 25-yard line. Young going back to pass. Has a man wide open off the fingertips of Thomas. Last year in the second half versus Oklahoma State, Young was unbelievable. Eight for eight throwing the football. He's already bettered his rushing mark from last year in the second half, and you can see what he's done. Seven for 22 for 83 yards tonight. That one he'd love to have back. Yeah. He had plenty of time to go through his progressions and just missed David Thomas, led him a little bit too much on that ball. Second down and 10. 5.35 to play in the third. Young showing patience, wants to throw back to the left. Now scrambling, has a couple of guys open, throw caught at the 33-yard line by Pittman. And he's got the first down over the 35 to the 36-yard line. Pickup of 12. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Charles mentioned he was very surprised to see Casey Stutter in that punt return team. That was an adjustment they made at the halftime. That was the first time Stutter's ever been there. But they talked about how close they were to blocking the punts. He said, let me run into the picket fence. Somebody will block it. Just put me in there. So like a bull rush, he did it. Great, great pickup on that one, Craig. And Texas didn't even have a block on in terms of the re they had a return on. And Stutter and Killebrew were just forcing the punt. And they were able to get a piece of it. Charles goes to the left side, trying to turn the corner. And he lowers his shoulder on Daniel McLemore. And he takes the 5-7 corner out of bounds. May have hurt his ankle, too. Yeah. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. Now, Charles has been bothered by that sore ankle the last three games and looks like he may have aggravated again. Hope we get an update on it as soon as we can, but he was hobbling off. Second down and five for the Longhorns. Inside of five minutes to play in the third. Can't tell what happened, can you, Craig? But he reaches down oh, right away. But he looked where he reaches. He reaches yeah. for it. the back of his right leg. That wasn't his ankle. Yeah. Back of his right leg, and that normally indicates hamstring. Let's hope he's all right. Sweet wide of the left. Kelvin Young in the backfield. On first and ten. What a two-step drop. Young, he's going to be corralled, but he still is able to gain a yard. Gary Don Bray wrapped him up. You love players like Big 81 out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Plays hard. Normally gra uh, grades out the highest. Just a guy that uses every ounce of his ability. And any guy named Jerry Don. You got it. He's either going to be a football player or, or he's going to be wrestling steel. Oh, yeah. And he might be able to do both at his size. 404 to play in the third. Second down, we'll call it nine. Nothing doing. Over the 50, up down to the 49-yard line is Selvin Young. Roderick Johnson is having an outstanding night. Seven tackles from that middle linebacker spot. Of course, he's subbing for Lawrence Pinson. He is a true sophomore, too. They consider him one of the most talented linebackers they have. College football on TBS brought to you tonight. Selvin Young went off gingerly off the field. The homecoming crowd. They're losing their <laughs> That's a bad wig. <laughs> that is, let's hope it's a wig, huh? Either that or he's a hockey player. <laughs> Third down and six. R. Thulin at Twitter.com. <laughs> Obadiah in the backfield with Vince Young. Young looks, fires it, got the first down complete to Taylor. Inside the 40-yard line, the market at the 37. That's his first catch of the night. It was zone coverage, but what Vince Young found was essentially the one-on-one -on -one matchup. 
Ramon's Taylor, number 11, against Martel Van Zant, who gave him plenty of cushion to the wide side of the field, respecting the speed of Ramon's Taylor. Very methodical on this drive, the Longhorns. 30 yards really picked up here in the third quarter. Vince Young sprint. A big part of it. Little play action. Looking into the flats. Got his man inside the 30. Thomas inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the 8. That's why he's considered one of the best tight ends in the country. Let's give some credit to this offensive line now. The run blocking hasn't been quite what they've wanted running inside. But the pass blocking has been exemplary here in the second half. Vince Young's been able to get back into the rocking chair, go through progressions, and on that one, he found David Thomas for a 28-yard gain. He has 25 receptions on the year. That's what he had last year. That's his fourth tonight. And it's a first and goal on the eighth for the Longhorns. Nothing doing. Obaniah. The big redshirt freshman out of Missouri City, Texas. 6'1", 220 pounds. Dance Bedford, the defensive coordinator. For Oklahoma State trying to find a way to stop this Texas Longhorn drive. Well, Jamal Charles, I think, is back in the lineup. Second down and goal from the eight. Gotta move over Taylor, moves over into the slot. Young keeps it and he will score touchdown Texas. A lot of defensive coordinators look like that after Vince Young hangs up 230 at him and two touchdowns. He's averaging 14 yards a carry tonight. More importantly, he's pulled the Longhorns within three. You know, this is, gonna be, this is interesting, Rob. When I look at Vince Young, I'm reminded of a guy by the name of Johnny Sample. You remember Johnny mm -hmm. Sample? Defensive back with the Jets in the Super Bowl. Baltimore Colts came out of a place called Maryland State, which is now Maryland Eastern Shore. You know what they used to do every day at the end of practice? They'd run to the end of the practice field and say, Maryland State Hawks don't lose. That's the way Vince Young does it with the Texas Longhorns. And you can see it on that scamper. Vince Young, 230 yards tonight on just 16 rushes. Career high in total yards, a career long and run. Last year, we mentioned that Texas Tech game, and then we mentioned the Oklahoma State game last year, and of course the Rose Bowl game, but the light kind of came on for Vincent running the football in those games. Yeah, but the Texas Tech game was running the ball and the attitude change where he's gone to the coaches and said, you've got to let me be me. I know you want a serious kind of quarterback, but that's not me. I'm competitive, but I need to be loose. They allowed that. And then the Oklahoma State game, we saw the passing come to the front for Vince Young. Well, McLemore almost gets up to the 30. We understand it's a nail-biter out west. UCLA is absolutely unbelievable. Fun one, of course. We will have Stanford next week against USC right here on TBS. Talk about the will to win. UCLA has been that way all yeah. season long. And that's headed up by their quarterback, Drew Olson. Payne is scrambling for his life. That's got to get down, and it does. Loki put the pressure on from that nose tackle spot. Now you feel that defense take it over, don't you? Definitely. And what I liked, though, was Alpena's poise and decision making. Mm -hmm. He got outside the tackle box. Right? They always talk about inside the tackle box, you can't ground the ball. Outside the tackle box, throw it wherever you want to. He did not try and make a play downfield, threw it out of bounds, lived to fight another play. The pressure's coming, he handled it on that one. Two minutes and 11 seconds left here in the third. And they'll change the play again. Going to have a running with Hamilton. Maybe gets up to the 30-yard line. Pick up about two on the play. CSTV All Access. Listen to live games and view press conferences, coaches' shows, exclusive athlete features, and more, all on your computer. Go to CSTV.com to sign up. 
37 year old Mike Gundy. He was here as a quarterback. He knows the pressure that his young quarterback is feeling right now. They have fought their hearts out tonight. Pena. Trembling again to his right. And again, he throws this one up for grabs. It's going to be out of bounds, incomplete. Woods try to come up with a circus catch. Boy, you can just feel that Texas defense getting some confidence. They're getting stronger and stronger. And on that play, Al Pena was a little bit too close for comfort mm -hmm. for keeping that on the sideline. Allowed too many people to have a chance at the football. Brian O'Rakpo, number 98, putting him on the ground again. I think Mike Gundy, the head coach, is fighting you know, himself inside right now because I think he wants to do more with his offense, but field position is dictating that he not take too many gambles. And he knows if he doesn't take some gambles, yeah. he won't win this game. Here comes Texas again, right up the middle. This time, five gets it off, and it's not a long kick at the 38-yard line. Nothing doing up to the 40-yard line. 33 yards on the kick, just five on the return. One minute and 13 seconds left to play. In the that was correct. These guys are tremendous, aren't they? Now the Longhorns, great defensive stand, get the ball back, and they go to work with Young. And he's doing it with his legs this time. Oklahoma State just strings him out. He's able to get up to about the 43-yard line. That'll be a pickup of two on the play. But we've got a Texas Longhorn down at the 37-yard line. To us, but we can't duplicate it. <laughs> That's right. You know, we can't do what he's doing out there. Well, he's a member of the 30-30 club, 30 rushing touchdowns, 30 touchdown passes. Now they face second and seven with 67 seconds left in the third. Charles in the backfield. Young steps up. Here he comes again. He's got a lot of green in front of him. But he will take the smart route and scamper out at the 44-yard line with 101 to play. Pickup of 12. I wonder how tired the defense is getting for Oklahoma mm -hmm. State. Because for Vance Bedford, what he was concerned about was the big offensive line of Texas wearing down his defensive front. But I think what's happened is that Vince Young is wearing down his defense because of how much they've had to chase him. That's right. Chase him in the pocket when he goes back to pass. Go back there, then he takes off the other way. Now you got to chase him back downfield. He's starting to wear down the Oklahoma State guys. And they've got another first down. They take to Charles. They'll put it up. Has plenty of time. Into the flag. Caught. Charles inside the 25, down to the 21 yard line. And he comes up hobbling again. Pickup of 23 on the play. You know, when you always talk about people defending sideline to sideline, also you have to defend goal line, I mean pocket to goal line, because you have to chase Finch Young in the pocket, and then you have to turn and retreat after he completes a pass, or if he flushes and runs downfield. So you're not just defending width, you're defending length, and there's Jamal Charles, who went out before with what I hope is a cramp, and it appears that he may have that have, have yeah. had that return on yet in his leg after he completed the after he completed the pass and run. Here's Craig Seger. Well, you guys have been praising the Texas defense here tonight. Gary James and Rex James, they're from the Jim Thorpe Association, which is based in nearby Oklahoma City. They have their eyes on Michael Huff as a candidate, not only for the Thorpe Award, for the Defensive Player of the Year. In fact, Texas, along with Roderick Wright and Aaron Harris, three players nominated for National Defensive Player of the Year. Then you had Tim Crowder is nominated for the Hendricks Award, four of the best defensive players in the country on one team. You got that right. Young looks over the middle. Touchdown! Texas has taken the lead. Neil Tweedy. His first reception earlier in the night and his first touchdown of the year there. The Texas Longhorns firmly believe, and once again he's proving it, Vince Young will not let us lose. No. That's 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 the confidence the whole Texas team has. That's not just offense. Mm -hmm. That's the whole team. 
Here is a guy that after the Rose Bowl, an incredible win, he walked into a meeting room right after it, saw the guy slumping in a chair, and he said, how dare you be so pompous and arrogant. Let's get back to work. We're not done yet. That tells you the kind of leader Vince Young is. And they're going for two. And they've got to. Ahmad Hall. He's a husband, he's a father, he's a Marine, and a sergeant. But here's the touchdown. It just put the defensive backs in a major stress because you, you're, trying, you're trying to cover out the whole field. Did you see how wide Ramon's Taylor was, number 11? Forcing you to defend the whole width of the field. And Neil Tweedy's able to run up the seam with no defensive back in sight. And his second catch of the year turns into... Out of 48 seconds, the short kick. And a bunch of white jerseys. Here's Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. Ron and Charles, remember when UCLA trailed 24-3 in the fourth quarter against Stanford? In overtime, Stanford kicks a field goal, and UCLA gets this Olsen to Brandon Brussel touchdown pass. UCLA, fourth fourth quarter comeback victory of the year. They're 8-0, 30-27 over Stanford. And it's all because of that quarterback, Drew Olson. Drew Olson and the foundation set in place by the head coach, Carl Burrell. They yep. talk about guys with a will to win. We've seen it. We saw them come back against Cal to win their ball game. And thoroughly dominate Oregon State last week. Well, now let's see if Oklahoma State can answer. They're only down by six. Pena. Oh, my. Here comes the defense. Here's Craig Sager. Oh, I saw Jamal Charles limp off the floor, field and then also go into the locker room. It is not his ankle. It is cramps. Uh, we can only assume that he's going in for fluids because I was told he will return. All right, Craig, thanks for the update. Coming into that play, the Oklahoma State had only 74 yards offense here in the third quarter. And if you're Oklahoma State now, you think about letting this thing tick down and go to yeah. the fourth quarter because they're having a... As Jimmy Carter said, a crisis in confidence right now because of this rush from the Texas Longhorns. A little uncertain in their ball handling. 49 yards offense and 26 points in that third quarter. Oklahoma State only 75 yards and no points in that third quarter. Payne has to swing it out to the far side. They're going to be short of the first down by about four yards. Tommy Devereaux on the reception. That defense just closes so quickly. Six tackles for Michael Griffin tonight. The terrific observation because, again, Texas blitzed from the wide side of the field. Mm -hmm. And Oklahoma State went back to the short side and appeared they had something going. But Texas's ability to close and get to the ball as we look at the numbers, last year 105 yards allowed, tonight 79 in the second half, and once again zero points. As Texas just ran the last play down. Third down and about two. Texas for six on the line. And that's going to be a penalty. Delay of game. Pena did not look up at the clock. Timeout. Oh, they called we'll the timeout. The they got it out. Timeout. And we'll call it seven. Nope, third down. And, yeah, third down. And, no, third down. And, uh, well, they get a timeout. They did give the timeout. So it's third down and two. Well, it doesn't matter because now they're going to get a penalty called out for jumping around again. I'll tell you, we looked at the replay. We didn't think. That ball, false start. Number 61 offense, five yards, third down. That's his fourth penalty tonight on him, on Koenig. See, when they stemmed, what they call stemming, see yeah. how the defensive line moved from one side to the other? See how they shifted their, their assignments? That's when they got Koenig to jump. I've been watching number two, Aaron Harris, the middle linebacker, orchestrate this defense for Texas, calling the line stunts, calling the movements, getting people lined up. He's truly their maestro out there. Mm -hmm. They're down in seven now instead of 32. Pena's got some time, throws over the middle, pass is incomplete. Intended for Tommy Devereaux, way over his head. And they will have to kick it away again. 
Yeah, I really think Mike Gundy wants to do more. I think, really think he wants to take more shots downfield, Ron. I really think he wants to force the issue a little bit. But field position, it continues to keep him from taking those shots. Because yeah. what he doesn't want to do is make the big turnover that results mm -hmm. in an easy score for Texas. He wants them to continue to have to work for it a little bit. The problem he has now is his defense is very tired. His defense has to be tired. And this is a good kick. Back to the 20. Ross. Looking for a block. Got it. Tip goes down the sideline and is thrown out. No penalty flag. Fans wanted it. 46 yards on the kick, 20 on the return. What's next? I'd say that's a dual threat. <laughs> Without a doubt. Now going to show us his passing skills. Throws it on to the flat. Pass is complete. Up over the 40, down to the 38-yard line to Thomas again. Now, these dual-threat quarterbacks we talked about, there's two of the Big 12 that are pretty good. Obviously, Smith and uh, Reggie McNeil from Texas A&M. Brad Smith from Missouri. This Oklahoma State defense had a lot of trouble with both of them. Smith accounted for 377. McNeil had plus 400. Yes, yeah, we just saw the, the graphic there. Vince Young working on trying to get to Stacey Robinson's record for most rush yards by a quarterback in a ball game. And keep it on the ground. Is that a fumble? No, good thing he was down. down. Obadiah just lost the handle, and we've got an Oklahoma State player very slow to get up. A lot of bodies are slow to get up. I really think fatigue is I, think, I think you're right. They have played their hearts out tonight on defense. Obanaya, number three, carrying the football. Ransom, 44. Oh, oh. Looks, like looks like that ball may have come out, and if so, you know, who came up with it at the end of the play? Oh Texas, my. Texas has got to get going right now before anything buzzes. From Vince, snap the ball. And he got it snapped. Vince will keep it. And he'll take a seat right at the line of scrimmage. The great with four tackles tonight, Victor De Great. Well, he gets up with a little hobble. See, the only thing that, that sticks in my mind about why it didn't get reviewed, because the ball came out and they were so adamant about it, the ground causing the fumble or it was down, mm -hmm. that the referees may have blown the play dead. See, watch the knee. But the ball's coming out there, but if they if they blew it dead, then it's not reviewable. Yeah. Because they said the play was over, which may very well have happened on a bang bang play. Well, it's third down, down three for the Longhorns. And they'll keep it on the ground. Victor DeGreat wraps up Obanaya again. And he'll be short of the first down. I think if I'm Texas, I'd go for it here. You know, they've had a little trouble kicking the ball tonight. Yeah. Balls have been blocked. You don't want another type, another play like that to get Oklahoma State back in it. You know, with my offense, I would think hard about going ahead and getting it done. Well, they're not going to do it. They're setting in their kicking team. Now, Craig they're... Sager talked about Mac Brown at the top of the top of our show. Yeah. There's a reason he's the head coach and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, he got a point there. There's a big reason. Easy for me to want to go for it up here, right? That's right. <laughs> And Pito has a 45-yarder already. This is going to be a 46-yarder. Big fear, though, is a block kick. And they fake it. Straight ahead running. I'm not sure they got it. The officials were saying they didn't. Great job by that Oklahoma State defense on the fake. Norgren tried. Snap to the holder, but they closed well on it because it appeared they had a little bit of a hole to get there. Look like Jamie Thompson, number 23, and Paul Duren, number 12, closing on the play. Well, now let's just here in the second half. Now Oklahoma State, a little round and dazzle. Devereaux over the 30, ducks his head, gets up to about the 33-yard line. Cedric Griffin on the stop, seven tackles on the night for the senior. Second time we've seen this play tonight. On the reverse to Devereaux, coming back the opposite way. Picks up a few blocks, but never totally outflanks Texas on the play. And Griffin able to 
make the tackle on the corner. And he was able to pick up four on the play. They'll come the other way in it. Hamilton. What we're seeing with Texas, too, you know, we're seeing guys that have been put in position to be faster players. And yeah. I think Gene Chizik's done a great job doing that. And what you mean by that, I believe, is that they, they'll take outside uh, strong safeties who are tough and a little bit bigger and move them to outside linebacker, where their speed as a strong safety yep. now outflanks you as a linebacker. Take outside linebackers, make them defensive ends, that sort of thing. The University of Miami started that in the 80s. Pumping mm -hmm. up those guys and putting more speed on the field and not worrying about size. On that last play, Aaron Ross, number 31, set the corner perfectly as a defensive back. Didn't allow him outside. The pump fake. Pena doesn't have a man thrown into double coverage. Dangerous. Incomplete. It was intercepted by Ross, but they say he was out of bounds. That pump fake faked nobody out in Boone's Pickens Stadium. Never had a chance. Aaron Ross appeared to be the intended receiver instead of the defensive back because he was all the way back there and had the play. And he comes down on the white. Yep. Excellent call by the officials. Uh, this Texas defense, and we've watched it over the years get better and better the last three years. Physically, mentally, they've really turned it up a couple of notches. And this year we're seeing, seeing them get better week after week. And here in the second half, we've really seen it. And the fake... Field goal doesn't cost him. If I'm Texas, I play punt safe here because I don't want Oklahoma State to have any type of a chance to fake it on me. Just realize that too many guys on the field, penalty mm -hmm. would have gone in Oklahoma State's favor. They would have kept the ball, took the timeout, and got it straight. Todd's on his 20. Ross back at his 22. Here comes the rush right up the middle again, and they got a piece of it again. Right up the middle. Killebrew with his second block. He's got to be feeling pretty good about himself. But you have to wonder how long Oklahoma State's taking to actually get the ball away. Well, let's take a look at, at the punter. He's a freshman. One, two, and he's so deliberate with it. Yeah. He's catching it because he wants to secure the catch. Watch, he secures the catch. He doesn't even get started yet. One, two, long steps. And a guy I played for in college, Johnny Majors, only wanted a one-step punter. Yeah. For those re for that reason you just saw. He wants that ball caught, gotten rid of. Well, Brew with a couple of blocks tonight, and they keep adding to Mac Brown's total here at Texas for blocks. Now the Longhorns controlling this game defensively, take over offensively with 10-10 to play. Time's on their side now. Poor Jamal Charles, Charles gets up again. Boy, I tell you what, on the fourth time, I think you'd say, maybe I shouldn't go back into the ball game. He gets back up hobbling again. I'm just not sure there are enough electrolytes in the stadium for that <laughs> young man right now. They're trying to get the fluids in him, but, you know, once it's it starts, yeah. it is really tough to combat it. Now, Lima Swede goes out wide to the right. Second down and four after the pickup of six by Charles. Taylor. He's got some running room. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Texas. <laughs> Ramos Taylor, 57 yards, the longest rush of the year for that young man. Remember, he was a running back last year as a freshman. They moved him to wide receiver because the running back position was so stacked. But with Jamal Charles having the cramps, Selvin Young, we've seen him get dinged up a little bit tonight. Obanaya got a couple of carries. They put Ramon's Taylor back at his old position at running back, and he shows his versatility with a big sprint to the end zone. No go for two again. And Texas is taking control of this game with 9.26 to play. Taylor in the backfield with Young. This looking, throwing, pass, knocked away. Good job by that Oklahoma State defense. Intended for Lima Swede. But Taylor, with the scamper, takes the handoff and rolls to the end zone. And the Longhorns now lead it 40 to 28. Much needed rest as his offense has taken over control along with the defense. Taylor on a 57-yard scamper for the touchdown. He had only one rushing 
attempt in the last couple of games. Actually, two rushes in the last four games. And it's going to be a short kick. From the 15, Jones gets up over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Wearing out the Oklahoma State guys. He has more rushing yards than the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Now Payne is going to be half to forced to throw it up. Into the flat, complete. Up to the 48-yard line. Ricky Price. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Charles was wondering when Larry Fedora was going to open up the offense. Well, the time is now. He was staying very conservatively as long as it was a one-possession game. But now that Texas has scored again, he's putting Al Pena in uncharted waters. Now, we talked to uh, Joe Wickline a few seconds ago. He's the offensive line coach. He told his offensive line, you have to give him time. Also, Charles, look for a possible open backfield with a five receiver set. They practiced that this week. They need to go to the vertical passing game. Thanks, Craig. Now, well, Pena looking for some time, scrambling for his life. Throws dangerous, incomplete, and he almost cost his wide receiver a hit and a half. Again, it's Ricky Price, the true freshman. And he was behind everyone. Yeah. And if Al Pena had, had had an opportunity to just throw it as far as he could, then he wouldn't have had to come back for the football. See, when Ricky Price came back to the ball, that brought, brought Michael Griffin, number 27, back into the play. If Al Pena had had a chance to set his feet, but he was scrambling and to just heave it, Ricky Price was behind everyone. And thanks for the pickup on the report, Craig. They had not wanted to use five wide no. receivers very much because they thought they'd be overwhelmed in the off by the by the defensive front of Texas. But as you said, now's the time. It's a two-possession game. Now Pena, look out. Texas is all over this one. Gold tries to get away. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe picks up a couple more. He made something out of nothing. Yeah, that's a better run than he'll get credit for. Oh, yeah. Dibbles on the shot. That should have been a loss of almost a loss of about five or six yards. Mm -hmm. Right there. He escaped Aaron Harris number 40. Robert Killebrew number I mean Aaron Harris number two. Robert Killebrew number 40. Griffin back there before a Huff and Ross. <laughs> Finally goodness. get to him. Nice play by uh, Greg Gold. Gain of two. Third down and eight. Uh, Pettigrew goes into the slot. Gold in the backfield. Third down and seven. Great right ahead running. It'll be about two yards short by Gold. Aaron Harris now with five tackles on the night. Talking about another coach's son. That's Aaron Harris. He's the enforcer of this defense. Got to love a middle linebacker that breeds pit bulls, too. <laughs> That's well, enough to just make you stop right there, doesn't it? Well, I can tell you right now, I'm not visiting him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You know? He's one heck of a football player. You know, it takes a lot of key moments to, to win a national. The Cowboys are going to go for it. They need two. Cross one behind Johnson. And they don't have enough guys on the field. Here comes the tight end, Wallen. Justin Waller coming onto the field. I think they've got to throw for it here. And they're going to. And you're looking. Has nobody open. Tries to force the pass. It's going to be incomplete. Good coverage again by Robert Killebrew, who has been all over the field. Pettigrew is the intended receiver. How about these troops of Gene Chiswick and Dwayne Aquina for the University of Texas? They have just totally suffocated the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the second half. No points allowed. Minimal running room. Mm -hmm. Not many places to go with the football pat in the pass game. And they just run you down. No matter what you do and where you go, they run you down. Well, Al Pena was just running for his life the last couple of series. And now with 8-20, Texas takes over. They're leading by 12. Trailed at halftime, 28-12. And in the second half, they've turned it on just like they've done the last couple of years against the Cowboys. Vince Young has been the star of the night. Taylor. He is going to be dropped for a couple of yards loss. Larry Don Bray again right in on things. Victor DeGreat was also helping out.
been a tough night for this homecoming crowd mm -hmm. at Oklahoma State because they came into it probably with not much hope. But they were given a lot of hope in the first half and through the third quarter. And right now they've seen hope kind of slip away from their Cowboys. Yeah. Well, you can't uh, tick your head enough for Oklahoma State for the effort tonight. Young will tuck it and run it. And he wisely tries to take a seat as he goes to the 45 up to the 48. Craig, what do you have for us? Oh, we saw Ramon Taylor score the touchdown. He's also getting the bulk of the carries now that Jamal Charles is on the sideline cramping up. He has a letter, a Christmas card he got from his grandmother who passed away two years ago. He holds it, also has it above his bed at home, and then when he goes on the road for a game like this, he puts this above his locker. It says to Ramon, I can't ask for a better grandson than you. You are the center of my life. Be good, take care, remember, never say I can't. Your loving grandmother, Celeste. So he brought this note with him here to Oklahoma State. He's performing quite well, repressing to Mount Cowles. Yeah, absolutely. Coaches love him. They want to give him a little more space running the football. He's a guy who doesn't need a whole lot of space. Got a pretty good arm, too, down to the 35-yard line. Billy Pittman, who's really blossomed into the go-to guy for Vince Young this year. And that's a terrific catch. A nice throw. With good patience by Vince Young. Moving out of the pocket. And this is, again, showing how he's grown up as a quarterback. Because in his earlier days, he would have truly just flushed and run for it. That time, he let his legs extend the life of the play for a 19-yard completion to Billy Pittman downfield, who held on despite a pretty sharp hit to his back. That is a lot of reps in the summer between he and Vince Young. They had an outstanding spring, outstanding summer together. And you're seeing the benefits. Here's Taylor again. Well, you know what the summer was for the Texas Longhorns when you really get down to it? It was the summer of Vince. That's right. You know, the, the, our, our network runs Seinfeld a lot, right? And there's one episode, the summer of George, to about one of the characters. It was the summer of Vince, where he directed and orchestrated everything that went on. You hear seniors talk about the leadership of mm -hmm. Vince Young, who's only a junior. The seniors talk about, yeah, we're going to be senior leaders. And Vince, yeah. you, know, you know, Vince always works his way into the conversation. The great note on the board, anyone who wants to beat Ohio State, Meet me here June 1 for summer workout. That's right. And there are some players that drove six hours in the summer just to work out for two and a half hours. At the start of the game, we told you the keys to the game for the Longhorns. We'll update you on them now. They really didn't have the fast start they had wanted. That's two years in a row. I, I think we mean we meant fast start in the second half. That's what we that's meant. What they yeah, got. That's Offensive it. line started to showcase with Vince Young getting downfield with his sprints and being physical, especially on defense, getting after the quarterback. Only 113 yards allowed in the second half and zero points. Well, you saw Mac Brown on the sideline. He's got a great relationship with the star quarterback. And they actually talked a lot this summer. And one of the things that Mac told them is, you don't have to worry about how many times you, you throw the ball or how many times you run it. Nobody's going to remember that. What you need to worry about is being the winningest quarterback in UT history, which isn't an easy chore. Last year, actually, Vince Young spent time talking to uh, Chris Sims and Major Applewhite about being the quarterback at UT. Now, the guy I would talk to, and I'll continue it after this play, but there's one guy I know I would talk to at, te at Texas about being a winning quarterback. There, bounces to the outside. Maybe gets a yard on second down and seven. Johnson and Martel Van Zant coming up to make the stop. Is it James Street by chance? Definitely. I would call no. James Street and spend time with him. 20 and 0 is my understanding. No. James Street's record at the University of Texas with a national championship in it, just like the building project here. He said, you know, you start, you have a plan, you start to execute it. Halfway through, you don't change up the plan. <laughs> you know, yeah. instead of change up what you intended to do with the building. You continue to build it till it's solid and, and you have a super foundation. That's what he's working on here in Stillwater. Well, his defense is going to try to stop Texas from getting these final six yards on third down. Inside of five minutes. And they do it. Great job by the defense. Closing up on Obadiah. Obadiah, the quarterback, wide receiver, DB in high school. He kind of did it all. It was very impressive this spring. And he comes up limping a little bit. Well, it's been a tough day for running backs for Texas, hasn't it? And I think this time, Mac, Mac Brown's going to go for it. Because I don't think points is the issue for him here. Kicking a field goal is not a big deal. His defense has played so well in the second half, he would rather have possession if they pick up the first down. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't, he's feeling so good about his defense, he's not too worried about it. 
rather than, you know, a block kick igniting Oklahoma State here as we wind the clock down towards four minutes. That's what they're going to do. Call a timeout with four minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Facing fourth and five. And we have had a lot of big plays in this ball game. And to figure out at first blush. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the tough part for Texas now is many people will look at Virginia Tech's big win over Boston College and wonder right. about my vote at number two. And fourth down and five. Young's pass complete inside the 15 to Thomas again. We talk about Billy Pittman being the go-to guy. Tonight was David Thomas, who didn't have any receptions last week versus Texas Tech. Well, he's just reestablishing his his spot. Because remember, David Thomas was the go-to guy mm -hmm. for Finch Young, leading receiver on the team. Shut out last week. And he's saying, you know, how can you neglect a fine broth of a lad as I, Vince? <laughs> I was out there all summer, too, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Forget about me. Remember the great catches I've made in the past? Just put them up there. Once again, he's showing his credentials. One of the top tight ends in the country. Right. First and ten from the 12. Taylor bounces to the outside. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Texas. Look at how he's able to just reverse field and then has the vision to see the gap. And once he, he does that, just as you call, partner, the foot race, it's just a different gear. And he just runs right through the attempt to tackle by Jamie Thompson and goes into the end zone. You know they want this young man to be a wide receiver. Yeah. Well, Greg Davis, his offensive coordinator, has said we need him to run better routes. I wonder if just mentally for Ramon's Taylor, we will do what he needs to do for the team. If just playing running back makes him happier. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm telling you. I mean, once a running back, it's hard to make that transition. And he's giving them reason to think, hmm, well, number 11 can do a lot of stuff for us back there in the backfield, can't he? Well, he runs a lot like this because he keeps people off balance. And of course, he joins Reggie Bush and Vince Young as the only players with a rush, pass, and a reception of plus 40 yards last year. So he can do it all. Yeah, he's in fast company, isn't he? Yes, he is. No pun intended. <laughs> I'd say that is fast company, isn't it? Or maybe I should say pun definitely intended. Now the Oklahoma State Cowboys only 113 yards from Mike Gundy here in the second half after rolling up 240 in that first half. And it's all because of the Texas defense. This is like a repeat of last year. This three years in a row where they yeah. had a lead, a decent lead on a Texas team and have not been able to hold it and have really been overwhelmed before the game was over. Mm -hmm. That is very difficult for them to deal with. But I will say this, Ron. Oklahoma State did not play this game like a 3-4 and four team. A no, team that had lost four games in a row. And that's a credit to Mike Gundy and his staff for being ready to go. Well, the kickoff's going to be short. It'll be not the one letting it go, though. Here's Ernie Johnson in our studios in Atlanta. Performance, back to you. I think that uh, Vince Young will throw his name in that energizing top <laughs> performance, too, huh? He did a pretty good job tonight. Yeah, pretty pretty good team effort for Texas, too. And we talked about the top of the show. Vince Young and the defense. And in the second half, that combination brought Texas back. Well, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, Mike Hamilton, had an outstanding first half. Let's check out the Big 12 standings. Of course, Colorado, another win again today. And this is our last Big 12 game of the year. And Missouri, a heartbreaking loss. Congratulations, though, to Mark Mangino, Kansas, beating them. How about Dan McCartney's squad today? Just thumping Texas A&M. And that leaves Texas with that one-game advantage over Tech. Of course, Texas owns the tiebreaker there. But the Sooners, big win over Nebraska today. And you can see how that rounds out. The big shootout, though, is still in that North Division. And that was a big win. <laughs> for, for Oklahoma over the ball. Oh, I'll tell you what. And I think Adrian Peterson is back. <laughs> Not just physically. Pass is complete up to the 35 yard line. Kenny Williams on the reception. His first catch of the year, the senior from Dallas, Texas, South Oak Cliff High School. Put some time at Howard College, and he has his first reception. Covered 15 yards. <laughs> That's not good if you're uh, Coach Gundy. 
No, they've really struggled, obviously, getting points in the second half. Yeah, they got to get a little bit stronger. Devereaux in motion. They keep it on the ground. Hamilton's got the first down. Fumble. The ball is loose. Let's see what the officials say. And it's Texas's football. Cedric Griffin is the one who forced it. Everything's looking good. He's got a little ball security. Got the point. Get it over the point. But they just pull and yank. Look like Michael Huff, number seven, from his safety position, popped the ball free. See right there? See Huff? Yep. Just yanks it free. And then Texas, in the first half, Oklahoma State would have come up with that football. Mm -hmm. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Charles David said at the beginning about this perfect storm that Oklahoma State needed for a whole 60 minutes and not just for 30 minutes. Well, now for the last three times these two teams have met so far, Texas has outscored Oklahoma State in the second half 118 to nothing. That's amazing, Craig. That's amazing. I mean, when you sit and analyze it, because we're talking about two Oklahoma State teams that went to bowl games prior to this season. Now, Vince Young still in the ball game, and he's got some running room, scrambling, and he will... That was probably the worst slide I've ever seen by a quarterback at the 30 time. But you know why? You know why he did it? That was. I think he's even cracking up. But you know why he did it, Ron? Huh. He was trying to keep the clock running. Yeah. See, he wanted. See, he wanted to just get down in bounds. See right there. <laughs> see, he wanted to be in bounds so that he didn't just run out and stop the clock. He wanted the clock to continue to tick. So it may have been a lousy slide, yeah, but well, the he, intention was pretty good. And he's done for the night too. They gave him the couple of extra yards, and Matt Nordgren comes in, the senior out of Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> what a way to end it, though. And you just heard the Longhorn Nation exhale, yeah. because they were like, why is he still in? <laughs> I know. That's what I was thinking. Henry Melton on the carry. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. We've got two minutes and nine seconds left. All right, partner, let me give you my last stats of the night. Okay. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, tells us every time we meet with him, they want nine explosion plays. Right. Plus 16 in the pass game, plus 12 in the run game. Texas tonight has had six running plays of 10 yards or more, four in the second half. And eight pass plays of 15 yards or more, six in the second half. Pretty much close to mission accomplished. I would say so. Greg Davis has done a great job with this offense again. They lose a 1,000-yard rusher in Cedric Benson. They had a string of 10,000, 10, 1,000-yard 1, rushers. Will that continue this year? Depends if Jamal Charles can get healthy, I'm sure. Well, if Vince runs, continues to run as he did tonight, <laughs> yeah, he might do it. State, I should say, it's a Larry Brown. The junior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. He gets up gingerly. About a one minute and 29 seconds. The Texas Longhorns will head home tonight. Head to Baylor next Saturday. The always tough Baylor Bears. And stick around for the Dodge Post Game Report. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action. Matt Rogers will have a report from that Florida-Georgia game. Remaining schedules for those teams that are still undefeated. Plus, Ernie's famous no-huddle highlights. I'm sure he'll run the Georgia Bulldogs highlights. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> they didn't play today, he said. <laughs> Well, one of the things Texas faces is they're really not going to have that big ranked team until probably the Big 12 championship game down in Houston because after tonight they go to Baylor, Kansas, A&M. Will be a difficult game. Dennis oh, Franchione will have his team ready to go, but they won't be a top 25 team. Right, and that's, and that's the issue that runs into play for your BCS standings. And people are looking at Virginia Tech mm -hmm. and seeing a more difficult schedule down the stretch. The thing for, for fans to remember is that last year at Kansas, it took Vince Young on a fourth and, what, 18? Mm -hmm. To scramble for 22 yards yeah. to keep Texas' season alive. If, not, if he doesn't do that, 
108. Thank you. You know, if he doesn't do that, faking That's out right. Nick Reed, who's a great linebacker for Kansas, and they're very tough on defense again this year, then we don't have mm -hmm. a Rose Bowl to talk about last year. That's right. Mike Gundy squad, they're going to try to regroup as after tonight. They will play Texas Tech in a couple of weeks. They have an off week. They hope to get Bobby Reed, their quarterback, who is supposed to be starting healthy by then. Morgan's going to put it up. Throws it out in the flat to nobody in particular. You know, we just saw Mac Brown, and we're talking about the BCS and this, that, whatever. Mac made one of the great comments after the OU game. He said he felt that a lot of the guys on his team were not enjoying their success. They spent too much time worrying about the BCS rankings. Mac wants these guys to enjoy this time in their life. He thinks they've deserved it. They've worked hard enough for it. And part of the problem when you don't beat a certain team for five straight years, meaning Oklahoma for them, that this year he wasn't sure how much they would enjoy it or mm -hmm. would it just be relief. I think they, they enjoyed that day. And he wants them to continue to enjoy each and every victory during this great time in their lives. Yeah, Matt's going to take a seat with 59 seconds left. Jamie Thompson coming up in that safety spot. Well, we were just talking about Virginia Tech and their schedule. Here's who they have left. And they've got a couple of ranked teams. Of course, Miami they've got to take on November 5th, next Saturday. Then they've got to go to Virginia, then North Carolina. See, and Virginia's been ranked a number of times during the year. And Virginia beat Florida State earlier this year. So that helps them with strength of schedule. Miami, who won again today against North Carolina. Virginia Tech was very impressive beating Boston College on Thursday night. So, you know, you, get, you add all that together, and Virginia Tech skates through that. And the ACC championship game, mm -hmm. where they'll probably face a ranked team in that ball That's game. Right. That's what you start to wonder about with DCS rankings. Hamilton on the carry. And, of course, I think you'd also be remiss without mentioning the fact that I think Vince Young has thrown his name back into the Heisman race after tonight. Oh, without question. I mean, you rush for what he did, and you 267 yards, and you throw for 239 yards and a couple of touchdowns. I think your name's right back in the picture. And number one, he brought his team back from a big deficit in the second half again. Mm -hmm. The will to win will often trump st statistics when you really get down to it. You know, the, the ultimate winner. <laughs> you know? Tom Brady doesn't have the gaudiest statistics in the world, but I don't think anyone would ever turn him down for the quarterback position, would they? That's right. Now, this is going to be the 15th win in a row, dating back to last year for the Texas Longhorns, 12 in a row on the road. This will tie that win streak in 1963 and 64, which ended after 15. They lost to Arkansas, 14-13. But Mac Brown's team is on a roll right now. We have another player down. Another more cramps. Looks like it may be Killebrew. And the clock is stopped with 21 seconds left to play. Just a reminder, next week we will head back out west. We will have Stanford taking on the top-ranked team in college football, USC. We may be the only people to have the number one BCS team on consecutive weeks. Different teams. Texas and the USC. Depending how the poll comes out. In any event, Texas was number one this week. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you, you know how, how, how it may turn out next week. Yeah, Walt Harris is doing a good job at, uh, at Stanford. Played UCLA tough to just a heartbreaker. UCLA tying it up in the final minute. Winning it in overtime behind Drew Olson again. Philip Brew is going to be helped off the field. The last thing you want to see is injuries this late in the ball game. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there won't be anything that will cause any trouble down the road for Texas. Don't forget UCLA still undefeated, still in the hunt. That's right. Alabama still undefeated, still in the hunt. A lot of weeks left for this thing to play its way out. Well, Oklahoma State continues to play hard as Hamilton gets over the 40-yard line, down to about the 35-yard line. That's the way it's going to end. Mike Gundy's squad fought their hearts out in the first 30 minutes. Couldn't get anything going in the second 30. Mac Brown's Texas Longhorns continue their win streak. The number two team in the country. Texas wins at the final 47-28. to And you can hear Mac saying, great job the way you played. It's a class act all the way through. Vince Young, Mike Gundy, two quarterbacks talking to each other. One now a head coach.
Great effort by Oklahoma State, but the better team did win the football game tonight. Here's Craig Sager with Mac Brown and Vince Young. Well, at halftime, Mac Brown told us after he told Vince Young that uh, Vince would not let them lose this game. But well, you got to tell me, it's pretty nervous. Nerve-wracking on the sidelines at times, isn't it? Well, it is, and, and Vince has uh, been behind eight times and won all eight, so uh, we believe any of this team's got great confidence. We've got a lot of depth, and good job, bud. You did a great job. Uh, and uh, they made all the plays in the first half, and we came back. Really proud of our team, the way they played from behind on the road the second half. Vince, obviously your coach has all the faith in you, so do your teammates. What do you do differently in the second half? What turned it around tonight? Uh, believe in our defense, and our offensive line did a hell of a job tonight. I mean, making, getting them big holes, our guys making big catches downfield, and we just stayed poised, and we've been in this before. All we got to do is stay poised and play our game. There's a lot of football left, but you're now number one in the BCS standings. You have a motto, take dead aim. How important is it to keep winning and take that aim at the goal at the end of the year? Well, it's really important, and you got to win a trap game on the road. We played three really emotional games. We came out here today. They were fired up, had nothing to lose, came out and played really hard. Really proud that our guys overcame all the adversity and the emotion up here, uh, and it just makes us getting excited about going to uh, Baylor next weekend. Every coach says take one game at a time. Your coach also says take the, that aim on the goal at the end. Tell us about your feelings right now as you get closer and closer to that goal. I mean, we just keep fighting and taking care of our business and coming out getting big victories like this. We should be all right. Everything going to play in. Uh, as a team, as a whole, special team and coaches and fans, we all got to pull together as one. They're behind at the half, but they finish winning 47-28. So let's go back upstairs to Ron and Charles. All right, Vince Young accounted for three touchdowns in that second half, 184 yards, throwing the football. You've been watching TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. Next Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern, USC taking on Stanford as they look to get their win streak to 31. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Stillwater. Final again, Texas wins at 47-28. Here's Ernie Johnson in the Dodge postgame show.